We have a letter in here from somebody, uh, some company that's evidently dealing with Chris Jacobs about, they say they have an easier way to fix the uh, um, lines across the marsh. Um, and he seems like he's been in contact with Chris Jacobs, and I, it appears that Chris Jacobs is going to give us some type of a report on this before the election. This gentleman wrote us a letter, an offer to work, mm -hmm. um, some time ago. Basically the same letter you now have in front of you, which is a repeat. Uh, Public Works, uh, talk to them explain to them the positioning of the various pipes running across the marsh and uh, following that critique and, and examination of the information they said they couldn't do it they could not do the work uh, they can't clean the lines because of the the, the drops and the, the bends in the lines there's no way to do that they can't they can't uh, televise the lines because they don't have any equipment long enough to do that with uh, now this letter returns a couple of weeks before the annual town election where the bond issue is, is in. Uh, I know that uh, the director and the deputy director have uh, talked to them, uh, explained the fact that they, uh, they indicated prior to this that they could not do the work after examining the situation, and yet the letter has been renewed. Very suspicious activity as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they are going to go back to them, and I know Chris is going to do a short report, uh, and I'm just giving you sort of a overcast of, of what that's going to be. Um, these people are not qualified to do the work by their own admission, and I think this is just a, uh, something to cast a shadow on the entire proposal to do the work. Uh, that's something for the town to vote on. I can't influence that. Uh, but I think if, if you really want to do justice to something and you admitted that you couldn't do the work you shouldn't be out trying to to cast shadows on the work that's going to be done or proposed but it does appear that he's going to be having more contact with chris he, he already has had more contact with chris and he was going to go back to his staff and find out why uh they had they had sent this letter uh because there was no basis to send it so my question is if something does happen that there was a different way to find out how to do this uh, or, and to, a different way to save money. Once it's voted on, is it possible to do it a different way? Well, that's up to the Board of Selectmen. I mean, you but, have to I approve mean, those bids. The money, once the $5 million is approved yeah. and a, a, a lesser uh, uh, amount of money uh, offer that, could, that was found to be suitable, could it still be done? Sure. It could be. It could be on, on your vote, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the main question I had. Yeah. One of the problems that we have is that the, the line does not go, it's not laid straight across the marsh. It goes out, it goes under various water bodies uh, because you have to, the navigable water bodies on the law, so we can't impede passage of boats or whatever over those water bodies. Uh, they also makes a bend at one point. Um, the only way, and their proposal is to clean the pipe and examine it and to certify that it's okay. The only way to do that and to meet the requirements of the state, which is to clean it once every five years, is to go out and dig it up in at least three places in the marsh, to break it, <coughs> to bring it up out of the marsh and clean it. I don't know how you're going to do that because you've got to force the material out one end or the other, uh, obviously into some sort of receiving facility, which we don't own don't have a big enough one to, to own, and then put the pipes back together again. Now, to go out about a third of the way in the marsh, it cost us almost $200,000. So I'm talking two, four, $600,000 minimum every five years. And then if there's something wrong with the pipe, then replacing it. So that's a lot of money uh, to really accomplish not much at all. Um, and the money in the bond issue couldn't be used for that. It would have to be used for something else, something in the within the wording of the bond issue, if, in fact, we even float the bond issue. That's up to the taxpayers, and it's also up to the board. I mean, you, you don't... A bond issue passed by the taxpayers that you find to be defective, you don't have to issue. 
That's the law. You have to sign for it as their representatives. So. Thank you. And I know we have a administrative order that although we have appealed, the administrative order still says we need to do away with those two lines going across the marsh. The administrative order does not leave it in our discretion to do that as far as the state's concerned. You're right, we have appealed that. Uh, so the order is on stay because the appeal is pending. Uh, don't know when the state will be actually reviewing that order. I know that they'll officially receive it probably next week at the next meeting of the Water Board. Um, and they'll verify that it was properly filed and so forth. And they'll put it in line with any of the other cases that are pending, which could be two months from now, could be a year from now. Don't know. Um, once that's adjudicated, if they find in our favor, then the, the order is dissolved. If they do not find in our favor, then the order is implemented immediately. Okay, thank you. Whatever that means. <laughs>